everybody, Ivan here. Today, I got something for you. I picked up a couple of two by fours from the local home center, just your basic Douglas fir, and I'm gonna attempt to build a tensegrity table. A tensegrity table gives the illusion that it's floating due to using a constant compression and tension within the major points of the table. I know it sounds like a lot, but it actually shouldn't be that hard of a build, so I'm gonna give it a try. Follow along, and trust me, you're gonna wanna subscribe to my channel after this, because I've got a few more of these projects lined up for the future. Pretty cool, right? I told you. So follow along, I'll explain. It's not as hard as it looks. The first thing I did was take an eighth inch off both sides of that two by four, so I have sharp, clean edges to work with. Then I cut eight two foot pieces out of my stock lumber. not to create my lap joints. So I originally ripped my two by fours to three and a quarter inch, knowing my table saw blade only goes to three and a quarter inch, so I have nice clean laps. I spaced it three quarters off the fence and made my initial rip. And then I lowered my table saw to three quarters of an inch and finished off the cuts for the lap joints. Now I just dry fit all the pieces to make sure they fit nicely. Then after pre-drilling two holes in each corner, I apply glue to all four corners of the lap joints and then I can secure the structure. And I secure it with inch and five eighths drywall screws. Clamp and let it dry for at least an hour. Now for the arms of the table, I cut two two by sixes to about 32 degrees. Then I measured up 16 inches from the long point and made a second angle again at 32 degrees. Then I sketched out the design I wanted for my arms and cut it out with a jigsaw. Then I traced the first arm that I cut on my second 2x6 so they both be identical and then sand both pieces down thoroughly. I then found the center point of one of the sides and dry fitted my arm. Then using my multi-tool I cut out about half an inch of the block. And using my plunge cut router, I cleared out half an inch of the hole. And then use my chisel to clean out the rest of that mortise. I then used an inch and a quarter round off bit and smoothed off all the edges on the outside and inside of this piece. I then use that same inch and a quarter round off bit to round off the edges on both of the arms. I then use an orbital sander to sand down all the sides of the arms in first a 60 grit and then a 120 grit. Now on the opposite side of where I originally cut out that mortise, I pre-drilled two holes where I'll be screwing and attaching the arm. Then I applied glue in the mortise, set my arm, used my square to make sure it was perfectly level, and then I screwed it with two two and a half inch screws up from the bottom. All right, so the main portions are done for the tensegrity table. This will be the bottom half of the table. This element is glued and screwed. And this will be the top. It'll fit right over here. Um, I'm gonna figure out my spacing now and figure out how to secure this and how the actual tensegrity works. And I chose the early American stain color from Minwax and stain both pieces. Now using my square, I went an inch and a quarter on both sides to find the midpoint where I'll be drilling my holes. Now using a one inch Forstner bit, I drilled down about three quarters of an inch on all four corners opposite the side where the arm is. Now 
Then using a 3 8 Forstner bit, I drilled right in the center of my original hole all the way through to the other side. Then I made a 7 8 of 1 inch mark on the end of my workbench and cut 10 10 penny nails to 7 8 of an inch. Then I set one each of those nails in the holes I already pre-drilled and put super glue on both ends. I then built a temporary jig structure to hold this table in place while I level it and figure out my heights. Now once the table was level on all sides, I used a tape measure to find the exact midpoint and used my plumb bob to find the direct center and make my mark on one of the arms. And again, using my one inch Forstner bit, I drilled down about three quarters of an inch. And as I did last time, I then took my three eighths Forstner bit and drilled through the rest of the hole. I then dropped the nail through that hole so I could figure out exactly where the midpoint was on that second arm. I put a mark and drilled through that as well. Now in the two holes that I drilled in the arm, again, I dropped one of those nail heads in there, used some super glue, and glued both sides. Then I used 80 pound fishing line, fed it through one side of the hole, wrapped around the nail, came back down the other side, and tied myself a taut line hitch. And then snugged it up tight to the nail. I then fed the fishing line through the other side of the arm, pulled it through, and tied myself a double clove hitch. It was 95 degrees today, and unfortunately I don't have any air conditioner in my shop, so I brought this operation inside. So again, the middle arms are already tied up. Now, for the bottom and top frame, do the same thing. I tied a taut line hitch to one end. Once that was done, feed the line through to the top part, and then tie a double clove hitch. Now it's pretty hard to get this really taut, so I used my pliers, yanked on it, so I can get that knot really tight around that nail. So after the bottom was nice and tight, again, this is the top part. I built my jig again, ran the line through the hole, back down the hole, and end up tying a double clove hitch. All right, so after I tied those knots on all other four corners, I now carefully remove my jig and hope for the best. Oh my God, one side is actually floating. So I very hesitantly put a little bit of pressure on it realized some of the corners were a little loose so I just had to tighten up some of those fishing line and fine-tune the whole structure but it works and I'm happy cool okay so I brought the table back into my shop I rebuilt the jig because now I have to fill the holes with a dowel so I got a quick one by six put it underneath there just want to hammer in the dowels the structure won't fall apart then I added glue inside the hole, a little bit on the dowel, and hand tightened it in there, gave it a few taps with my hammer, and cut it off with my coping saw. And repeat this process for all the other holes, sand them all down smooth, and you're good to go. And also repeat the same process with the two arms, 
apply the glue first, glue on the dowel, set it, cut it, sand it all down. So I'm finally done. This was quite the undertaking. This tensegrity table took me a couple days trying to figure out all the geometry, physics, what kind of knots to tie. So just going over quickly, again, this top structure and this bottom structure were the exact same. It just was a two by four that I ripped, molded, and created this design. Then I used 60 pound fishing line. I got one, two, three, four, and one in the middle. I did a taut line hitch at the bottom and then a clove line hitch at the top. So I was able to get that nice and taut. Um, so yeah, it floats. It's pretty cool. I'm happy with it. Um, I'm gonna have a glass made. I'll put the glass on top. And then it should probably hold, I don't know, 15, 20 pounds if I'm lucky. But there you have it. So hey, if you're into any other DIY projects, home renovation, gardening, or anything else construction, do me a favor, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have a couple more of these cool tables I'm going to build in the next coming weeks. Thanks for watching.